What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our 12th example video following our course on differential equations. Now, today's video is going to be continuing on the method of undetermined coefficients, and we're going to be specifically focusing on when the forcing function involves trigonometric functions such as cosine and sine. So let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so our goal for today's video is to solve equations of the form ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals p of x cosine of omega x plus q of x sine of omega x. So the particular solution for this type of differential equation will be given by y sub p is equal to a of x cosine omega x plus b of x sine of omega x. And we have the following two conditions. So if we have a situation where cosine of omega x and sine of omega x are not solutions to the associated homogeneous equation, then the maximum degree of our a and b, which are the coefficients to our particular solution, is equal to the maximum of the degree of p and q, which are the coefficients of our trigonometric functions in our original equation. But if cosine of omega x and sine of omega x are solutions to the associated homogeneous equation, then the maximum degree of a and b is equal to one plus the maximum degree of p and q. So that gives us something to check for before we go throughout our solution process. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our first example. So number one says, find the particular solution for the following equation, and our differential equation is y double prime minus 2y prime plus y is equal to 5 times the cosine of 2x plus 10 times the sine of 2x. So right away we want to notice that the coefficients are uh, zero degree polynomials, so uh, p of x and q of x are both degree zero. So if you recall, assuming uh, cosine of omega x and sine of omega x are not solutions to the homogeneous equation, we will then have coefficients of our particular solution also of degree zero. Fortunately for us, this does fall into that case. So we can write out the general form of our general solution. So we'll have y sub p is equal to a times the cosine of 2x plus b times the sine of 2x. And now we can take our derivatives and make our substitution. So we have y prime of p, and that's gonna equal, let's see, we'll have negative two a sine of two x, and then we'll have plus two b cosine of two x, and then y double prime of p will be equal to negative four times a cosine of two x plus b sine of two x, and if you notice, this is exactly what we had for our y sub p. So let's go ahead and make our substitution. So we will have a cosine of 2x plus b sine of 2x. Then our coefficient for our y prime term is a negative 2. So we'll have negative 2 times negative 2a sine of 2x plus 2b cosine of 2x. And lastly, our coefficient for our regular y is just one. So then we will just have minus four times our y sub p. So I'm not gonna go through the algebra required to rearrange this, but once you rearrange this into coefficients for cosine of 2x and sine of 2x, we will get negative three a minus four b times the cosine of 2x. And that will be plus 4a minus 3b times the sine of 2x. And that is, of course, equal to what we had on our right-hand side, which, if you recall, was 5 times the cosine of 2x plus 10 times the sine of 2x. And just like before, we are going to make equations relating the coefficients of these terms. So we will have negative 3a minus 4b is equal to 5, and then we'll have 4a minus 3b is equal to 10. I don't know why I put parentheses on that first one. So once you solve this system of equations, you will find that a is equal to 1 and b is equal to negative 2. So we can simply plug those into our formula for the particular solution, and we will have our final answer here. So y sub p is equal to the cosine of 2x because our a is just equal to 1 and then minus 2 times the sine of 2x. So that finishes this problem off. It was relatively easy, but let's get into the next problem. 
So number two says, find the particular solution for the following equation. We have that y double prime plus 4y is equal to 8 times the cosine of 2x plus 12 times the sine of 2x. Now I hope right away you will notice that this equation is very similar to the last one and that we have constant coefficients, which means that our p of x and our q of x is of degree 0. So to illustrate why this problem is different from the last one, I will go ahead and do it similarly to how we did the last one. So I'm not going to bother deriving our derivatives like we did on the last problem because we already know our y sub p is equal to a cosine of 2x plus b sine of 2x. Let's look at what happens when we substitute. Like I said, our y sub p is going to be the same as it was for the last problem. It will be a cosine 2x plus b sine of 2x. And when we substitute that, if you remember from the last problem, we found that our y double prime of this is equal to negative 4 of our y prime. So that means when we substitute this in, we will have negative 4 times y sub p plus 4 y sub p, which is just equal to 0. So you might ask, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that our cosine of o omega x and sine of o omega x are solutions to the corresponding homogeneous equation, which in this case would be y double prime plus 4y is equal to 0. So what does that mean? Well, if you remember from our first slide, that means that we need to up the degree of our a and b in our particular solution. So let's go ahead and do that. So that means our new y sub p will be y sub p is equal to x times a cosine 2x plus b cosine 2x, where we now have a degree 1 polynomial in front of our cosine and sine terms. And I just noticed that I wrote cosine for the second one. That is supposed to be sine, so let's fix that real quick. Sine of 2x. Great. So now, just like before, we are going to take derivatives of our y sub p. So we will have y sub p prime is equal to, well, let's see. We will have a times the cosine of 2x plus b times the sine of 2x from the product rule and taking the derivative of that x. And then we will get plus what we get when we take the derivatives of our trig functions, which in this case will be plus 2 times x times negative a sine 2x plus b cosine of 2x. And then we are going to take our second derivative. So y double prime of p is going to be equal to negative 4a times the sine of 2x plus 4b times the cosine of 2x minus 4 times y sub p. So I didn't go through the process of taking the derivative there, but you're welcome to verify that on your own if you would like. So this means when we substitute this into our original differential equation, we will have our y double prime. So we will have negative 4a times the sine of 2x plus 4b times the cosine of 2x. And then we'll have minus 4y sub p and then plus 4y sub p. But that means these two cancel out. So we will just have this part here is equal to the right-hand side of our equation. So negative 4a sine 2x plus 4b cosine of 2x is equal to 8 times the cosine of 2x plus 12 times the sine of 2x. So relating the coefficients makes solving for a and b very easy. We will have negative 4a is equal to 12, and 4b is equal to 8, which of course means that b is equal to 2, and a is equal to negative 3. So that gives us our final particular solution. We'll have y sub p is equal to, I'll go ahead and pull that negative out, so we have negative x times 3 times the cosine of 2x, minus 2 times the sine of 2x. So that finishes off the problems where we do not have an exponential in front of our trigonometric functions. So let's go ahead and get into our third and final example. 
So number three says, find the particular solution for the following equation. We have y double prime plus 2y prime plus 5y is equal to e to the negative x times 6 minus 16 cosine of 2x minus 8 plus 8x times the sine of 2x. Now you may be asking how we solve this equation with this e to the negative x term out front. But the way we solve these types of problems with this exponential out front is we will begin by making a substitution y is equal to z times e to the lambda x into the differential equation. And in doing so, we will produce a constant coefficient equation for z with a forcing function p of x times cosine omega x plus q of x times sine of omega x which we can solve. And I hope that looks familiar because that's what we've been doing for the last two problems. So let's begin by making this substitution here where this omega x is just this exponent right here. We will begin by letting y sub p equal z times e to the negative x. This of course means that y prime is going to equal z prime minus z times e to the negative x. And that y double prime is going to be equal to e to the negative x times z double prime minus 2z plus z. So let's go ahead and make those substitutions. So that means y double prime plus 2y plus 5y is going to equal e to the negative x times, well let's see, the coefficient for our y double prime term is just 1, so this will just be z double prime minus 2z plus z. Then the coefficient for our y prime term is 2, so we'll have plus 2 times z prime minus z. And lastly, the coefficient for our y prime is a 5, so we will have plus 5z, like that. But from here, let's notice we can cancel lots of things. So these z primes will cancel out. Looks like I forgot to write the prime right there. And these z's will combine to give us 4z. So what we're left with is e to the negative x times z double prime plus 4z. And that's of course going to be equal to the right hand side of our original equation, which was e to the negative x times 6 minus 16x cosine 2x minus 8 minus 8x sine of 2x. But from here we can cancel out our e to the x's and we'll be left with z double prime plus 4z is equal to 6 minus 16x times the cosine of 2x minus 8 minus 8x times the sine of 2x. And I hope this differential equation looks familiar to you because last problem we found that the cosine of 2x and the sine of 2x are solutions to the corresponding homogeneous equation, z double prime plus 4z equals zero. So that means we're gonna to have to add one to the power of the coefficients of our particular solution. So we will have z sub p is equal to, well, let's see, the degree of the coefficients on the right-hand side is one, which means we will need a general quadratic for the coefficients of our particular solution. So we'll let z sub p equal a naught x, plus a one x squared times the cosine of two x. And then we'll have plus b naught x plus b one x squared times the sine of two x. Now I'm not gonna go through the process of taking these derivatives, but I will write them down for you so that if you want to evaluate them on your own, you can. So once you take the first derivative, you should find that z prime is equal to a naught plus the quantity 2a1 plus b naught times x minus 2b1x squared times the cosine of 2x plus b naught plus the quantity 2b1 minus 2a naught times x minus 2a1x squared times the sine of 2x. And then lastly, for our second derivative, we will have z double prime is equal to 2a1 plus 4b naught minus 4a naught minus 8b1 times x minus 4a1x squared. 
and that'll be times the cosine of 2x. And then for our sine part, we will have plus 2b1 minus 4a not minus the quantity 4b not plus 8a1 times x minus 4b1x squared times the sine of 2x. And that is a whole lot. But when you substitute that into your equation and simplify, you will find that z double prime of p plus 4zp is equal to 2a1 plus 4b not plus 8b1x times the cosine of 2x plus 2b1 minus 4a not plus 8a1x times the sine of 2x. And this allows us to write a bunch of equations equating coefficients. So we will have the following equations. We will have 8b1 is equal to negative 16, which of course means that b1 is equal to negative 2. Next, we will have negative 8a1 is equal to negative 8, which of course means that a1 is equal to 1. Then we will have 4b0 plus 2a1 is equal to 6, which means that our b0 is equal to 1. And lastly, we will have negative 4a0 plus 2b1 is equal to 8, which implies that our a0 is equal to 1. So we can plug that into our definition of the particular solution for z here, and we will have that z sub p is equal to x times the quantity 1 plus x times the cosine of 2x plus 1 minus 2x times the sine of 2x. And if you recall, we had set our y sub p to be equal to e to the negative x times our z. But we will replace our z with this z sub p here. So that will give us our final particular solution. We will have y sub p is equal to x times e to the negative x times this stuff right here. Great. So that finishes this problem off, and I think that's a good place to stop.